Packers throwback. Hey, Anthony, just wondering how you came through physically, uh, this this return to action, how you felt uh, compared to whether it was to start this season or even if you want to go back to last season, just kind of what, what's the evolution been for how you feel on the court? Uh, I feel good now. Um, you know, I think I'm starting to find a rhythm, uh, my my old rhythm, would be my old self. But I'm also, uh, body's feeling good, you know, besides the, <clears throat> the MCL this year which um, still trying to, you know, get back all the way healthy and, you know, the wrist a couple of games ago. But um, besides that, I feel, I feel, I feel great. Eddie, the wins didn't follow since Brooklyn, but it seemed like the last two games, at least I know you're only on the court for one of them, that the team had the requisite kind of camaraderie, energy, spirit, however you want to call it. How do you view What's left of the season headed back to LA? And is, do you have any concern about where LeBron is right now with his knee? Um, as far as health, uh, I have no idea what's going on. Um, we, I think we all still just are waiting to find out. I'm not sure if he's seeing doctors or, or what. I'm not sure. Um, but <clears throat> like you said, I mean, we've we've been there. We just got to find a way to get over the hump. I mean, there's no excuse for us losing this game tonight, obviously. But um, you know, down the stretch, you know, our execution you know, has to be better on both ends of the ball. Uh, you know, Trey got free a couple of times and hit some some tough threes, but, you know, guys like, you know, Trey and Steph, like those, they make those. So we have to force Dame, so we have to force those guys uh, to play inside the perimeter. Uh, we kind of let him get a little free tonight, uh, especially towards the end. You know, we kind of had him contained a little bit, and then he got free towards the end of the game. I mean, we only scored 20 points. You know, they had a 38-point quarter, fourth quarter. So uh, we had the game, you know, um, we just got to do a better job of, of you know, ex our execution on both ends of the floor. And um, you know, I think if, if we were able to do that, uh, we would have gave ourselves a better chance of winning this game. Kind of sticking with that for a minute, AD, um, looked like <clears throat> there was one possession where Malik took a three, and, but you were calling for the ball. And then I think maybe two or three possessions later, you're talking with Frank, and Frank said you were talking about Avery fouling. Um, and, and maybe there was a miscommunication there at some point. But do you think that maybe one reason that you guys aren't executing down the stretch is because in some fashion, maybe these, these fourth quarter lineups haven't played together in some of these crunch time situations? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's part of it. And the play with Malik, um, yeah, I was yelling at him. I mean, I know he had it going, but I was just trying to give him an easier shot. You know, and I told him, um, you know, once you in the zone like that and you're, and you're killing the team, you know, they're going to start sending doubles and trying to pressure you and make you shoot tough shots. And so I just want – I was literally just going to catch the ball and wanted him to fly off into a, for a pitch back and stop behind three. You know, that's why I wanted to get him. <clears throat> and he understood. I mean, we talked about it. And then I just didn't um, – my thinking late game with the foul, um, with A.B., uh, four possession game, you know, I think it was – 12 second difference or 10 second difference, something like that. And I was just thinking of, you know, we get a stop, quick score. We had two timeouts, you know, um, quick foul, and just hope that they, you know, miss a free throw. Uh, but I mean, it was a two possession game anyway. So, I mean, you know, AB foul, got down six and just had to try to execute our, <clears throat> our end of game plays and um, try to, you know, cut the lead down. But yeah, it was just plays that, you know, that group had to play play together. I mean, me, Brian and Russ ain't even played together, you know, a lot of games. So <clears throat> we just got to stay the course, man. And we got, I think, what, six more games before All-Star. It would be good to, for everybody just kind of get away and then come back and we got to get rolling. It, it, this, a lot's happened since you told us that you thought this team was capable of like, just like a 10 game winning shoot like, at any moment. Um, I kind of hear it in your voice a little bit, just sort of a seems like it's mentally tiring trying to figure out these problems mm -hmm. all the uh, time. Um, I guess, has your belief changed at all about the, the, the ease of, uh, to which this team thinks could, <coughs> things could turn? For, for this group? Um, no, I, I still believe that we got a good team. 
Um, we just haven't been all the way healthy for our team. I mean, all our players. You know, Bronze is now out. You know, now he just came back. Um, I think the most frustrating part is that we can't finish games. Like, we had a lot of games that we had won, and teams come back in and beat us. So that's a frustrating part. Like, we're frustrated right now because we're supposed to win this game. You know, um, and we, and this, our, it's, it's self-inflicted mistakes, you know, so that's the frustrating part where we can control those mistakes. Uh, you know, Trey hit tough shots, you can't control that, but, you know, the little things, the offensive rebounds, the turnovers, like you can control those things to give yourself a chance to win a basketball game. And so that's the most frustrating part, but I still have belief, man. We're a good team, like, no matter what happened in the regular season, you know, we get to the playoffs, we're a good team. And, you know, I still believe that, you know, Brown coming back is going to be an even better team. So, we just, like I said, we just got to stay the course, try to go into all-star break with a, with a nice run, and then, uh, you know, take that break and come ready, you know, come second second half of the season rolling. Hey, D, uh, Russ said after the Charlotte game that he had a conversation with you and LeBron about just kind of him finding his spots when you guys are out and you guys kind of talked about some of the stuff that you learned that you feel like he can apply uh, moving forward. I guess what, what did you guys learn from his performance in that game and how do you feel like you can get that version of him more consistently when you guys, you know, obviously you're back now, but whenever LeBron gets back to. Um, he was very good at attacking the, the basket and making the right reads. He was very good um, at the rim, finishing. Um, and he was just like in kill mode. And that's how he has to be, you know, at all times, making the right reads, finishing. Um, you know, sometimes he he get there, he get, he's very, he got a lot of emotions, right? And so when he get into going downhill or, you know, someone makes him mad or he don't get a foul call, you know, we try to help him, like, all right, it's okay, take a deep breath. Like, don't let that carry over into the next play. Um, and we all do it, you know, because we want to win so bad. You want to be the guy to help the team win. And he's never – he's played with one other. I mean, James wasn't – James really in OKC. Um, so he hasn't really had – where he had two guys, you know, where he can depend upon. That's the thing, like, you don't – me, him, and Brian can always have a bad night, you know, and the other two can, you know, pick each other, pick the third person up. And, you know, when he's when he's playing the way he played in Charlotte, you know, shooting the ball, getting downhill, making the right reads, passing, making the free throws, you know, he, he adds more pressure on the defense and creates opportunities for everyone else. And um, just trying to get him to play out of the, out of the slot more. That's what he was effective in Charlotte. He he stayed in the slot and was able to attack and make the right reads. Um, and was in the middle of the floor. You usually got usually have two guys sitting right there on both of the elbows, and now it's tough for him to to navigate. But when he's in the slot, he's able to just have one guy <clears throat> and then another guy in the shooter. I mean, in the corner, a shooter in the corner, and uh, it was effective in Charlotte. And so we tried to do some of that tonight. Um, and it just, like I said, they just got to stay on the attack mode. And when he's attacking, we're a different team.